this machine is a fast, affordable, portable gaming mini PC. And this machine will steal your girlfriend, empty your wallet, and could possibly ruin your life. Hi, I'm John the Net Guy. I review over 200 different products every year on my YouTube channel, from gaming monitors to pressure washers, spy cameras, and everything else in between. Recently, I received this mini PC for review. I was excited because the brand Ace Magic, formerly Ace Magician, is one I've heard a lot about and I wanted to work with more. The machine itself is a very powerful 11th Gen 11900H with DDR4 RAM, an NVMe drive, and even RGB in this tiny little package. Ready to play the latest esports and kid-friendly games, run as a home theater PC, Oh, and steal all your passwords, empty your crypto wallet, hijack your Steam account, and could generally ruin your life. You weren't expecting the last part? Yeah, neither was I. Let me tell you how I got here. You see, when I got this machine for review, I had a great idea. Let's play one of my favorite childhood games, The Oregon Trail. No, 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 not that one. The upgraded version from 2022 and I'll live stream it, showing the power of these little mini PCs to handle less graphically demanding game titles. I scheduled the stream, made the thumbnail, and I was getting everything ready to go. During my initial setup of the machine the night before the big day, I was admittedly in a hurry. I skipped all of the usual safeguards using my main business Google Workspace account while configuring the machine instead of my normal benchmark account. I gave it my internal Wi-Fi network password because this was a machine that I planned to keep for a while. I logged into Chrome, authenticated the new device with my MFA key, got Windows updates installed, and went to work installing Steam, and I started downloading all the games that I wanted to test. That's when this pop-up showed its ugly head. Ugh. Windows Defender, for all its haters out there, is actually some pretty capable AV software. Not as marquee as some other brands, but when it tells you something is wrong, it's usually not lying. Panic naturally set in, considering my internal network has a couple decades of my files on servers and my business and YouTube assets, and because I normally practice safe computing. I never open up any drive-by downloaders or other malicious software. I'm the guy that people call to clean this stuff up. No, I am the one who knocks. Looking at the alerts, the files mentioned were located in the recovery partition of the machine. These files are not normally accessed, only when you restore the machine would this file really execute. But for now, being sufficiently freaked the F out, I initiated a full PC scan where it found some additional files in the C drive windows folder. To rule out any false positive, I uploaded those files in question to VirusTotal.com to get an independent look at what these possibly were. With 50 different virus scanners recognizing this as malware, I resorted to DEF CON 4. Fletcher's on. Red alert. I shut the machine off. I resigned myself that I had a busy 24 hours ahead. There wasn't going to be any stream after all, and I would have to spend the next full day resetting passwords, MFA codes, and more. Curiously, when I went to the Amazon listing for the device, I noticed that there were some other customers had run into the same issue with this PC model. Given that the machine was coming with factory installed spyware, wouldn't Amazon be doing something about it? More on that later. Urgently, I sent something to the brand saying, what the F man? This was not a singular false positive. Speaking with some of my other nerdy friends since that night, one even recently had purchased another model of Ace Magic Mini PC. They had installed Linux, pulling the original NVMe drive, and I asked them to scan it. And sure enough, even that one had the same malware. So this wasn't a spear phishing campaign targeting me as a YouTuber. I've had that before. This was an epidemic of factory installed malware. My friend even informed me that a third model from the same brand from one of their contacts had tested positive for malware about three months back, this time in the RGB LED control software. So this isn't even their first virus distribution issue at Ace Magic. So what does this malware do? Looking at the most obvious offender, Redline malware is a particularly awful bug. Once it gets on your computer, it goes to work hunting for browser passwords, many popular crypto wallet storage files, your Steam account, and much, much more. Unlike other spyware, this product doesn't advertise its existence or annoy you with pop-ups. It's much worse. You wouldn't know you had it or were sick unless an antivirus program caught it actively running or on disk. 
It even encrypts part of its source code to help hide itself more from these protection tools. Once your machine is infected, the malware starts streaming your private data over the internet to a seemingly random DuckDNS URL, which can later be redirected to keep their network of infected machines going. So did the brand know that they were distributing malware? I don't think they did, at first. You see, all of these companies are able to sell mini PCs at ridiculously low prices because the Windows keys that are used are not necessarily on the up and up. In fact, I even found a mini PC on Amazon right now at less than the retail price of a single OEM Windows license. All of these brands insist on using bulk, international, or OEM gray market keys. When blocked by the Windows installer, they need a way to hack the Windows 11 install process. Their image with a tiny modification bypasses entirely the network setup portion of the install and lets you start the machine with a local Windows account, something Microsoft eliminated from Windows 11. This hacked version of the Windows installer was likely picked up on the internet from many sites that offer the ability to bypass Windows restrictions. This module is where the Redline credential stealer was embedded and hidden. So what do you do now? I reached out to my Twitter X family to get some advice. It had been years since I've had to even think about viruses and I wanted to make sure I did everything right. One of my friends, Barnacles, who has been through this before with the recent LastPass hack, helped me right away one-on-one -on -one with some great advice on what to do and in what order. Things like resetting my backup MFA tokens were not even on my original list, but very important. My password manager for over a decade has been LastPass. Though more recently, I started using Google Chrome's built-in password manager, thinking it was easier, free, and likely better security. Little did I know that Google Chrome's password manager is just a SQLite database running on the local machine. Because Chrome needs to enter your password on websites, the encryption is reversible with your machine password, which you enter every time the machine prompts you. I spent the next day completely changing all of my passwords and updating my MFA keys it made me realize how much of a treasure trove password managers have become. I asked publicly after this what recommended password managers people were using, and the field is very evenly split. From those who use elaborate local-only password management to an even distribution of the top remote password manager names in the business, Dashlane, OnePass, NordPass, LastPass, and more. Several people even commented that they never trust these mini PC brands and always wipe the machines and start it over fresh. I really can't expect that from a normal user to buy a machine and then immediately wipe it, download Windows from another PC they may or may not have, then go through the cumbersome setup and driver install process. I even actually tried that to see how hard it would be, and the Ace Magic model fought me the whole way. I would still need to download drivers from the PC manufacturer, of which only the Wi-Fi driver was available, and it came on a zip file from a Google Drive share, not instilling the most confidence. So are they still sending out infected machines? The next question I wanted to answer, was this a one-off event or an epidemic? Are the PCs shipping today still infected? I figured it was worth the $500 investment to pick up one of these mini PCs directly from Amazon and find out. The mini PC arrived box exactly as the model I already had. The only difference being a new brand of NVMe drive and a small P2 designation on the shipping box sticker. I spent hours removing the drive and forensically scanning it over and over without even turning on the machine. I'm happy to report the latest model is clean. Does that mean that the existing stock and future models will be? I don't know. I reached back out to the brand for more details. I told them that I had purchased another mini PC on my own and that the P2 designation appears clean. I needed to know, no bullshit, was this virus something they had known about? What does Marcellus Wallace look like. What? I told them if they knew about a bad batch of machines, I could probably understand that and continue the review. If they didn't know about the virus issue, or if their supply chain was actually compromised somewhere, I could definitely not proceed. Well, eventually they did admit to me that there was a batch of machines with a virus. While apologetic, this is a horrible way to start a relationship. I doubt I will ever see another mini PC from this manufacturer after this video drops. And that's okay with me. It's worth more to me to warn others of the danger than make a few bucks recommending a product that I know to be unsafe. So what should happen next? I'm calling on Amazon to notify all customers that purchase these infected machines that their personal information may have been stolen. 
Just like selling tainted produce or bad baby formula causes nationwide recalls, they should be recalling these PCs for customer safety, offering proactive support for those who may have been impacted and credit monitoring at a minimum. If I had lost my crypto wallet or real money, this could have been devastating. And for some customers, this may have already occurred. I don't expect every buyer to rip the guts out of their new PC and forensically scan the drive before boot up. At some point, we have to be able to trust the devices that we're buying are clean and sterile from the trusted stores we buy them from. I know I'm gonna change my processes going forward. Hopefully these tips will help you out as well. One. All new PCs go on the isolated guest Wi-Fi network for a quarantine period until fully updated and scanned. This is easy to do, even if you have the most common consumer Wi-Fi routers. This prevents newly added machines from infecting others until I've had a chance to inspect, scan, update, and clean install if that's my choice. Two, never use my business Google or Microsoft accounts on any new PCs until I'm absolutely sure it's been cleaned, scanned multiple times for known viruses, or I've cleaned and installed it from scratch myself. I know many other YouTubers and professionals that use separate logins and accounts for their important sites and files apart from their daily login. And three, I'm gonna reconsider my use of Google Passwords Manager. While password managers are very convenient and eliminate the need for writing down and memorizing complex passwords, they do create a all your eggs in one basket problem. The fact that they're so easy to decrypt means that an attacker with your Chrome account and a simple password can theoretically dump your database and access all of your online resources pretty easily. Instead of unlocking my password manager's vault with a password just to receive another password, using a passkey with eBay, PayPal, and many other websites means I can add biometrics and or a second uncompromised device to authenticate who I am. Five. And finally, I'm going to only buy PCs from brands with established legal software. Dell, HP, Lenovo, Samsung, Apple, and through retailers like Amazon, Best Buy, and Costco that have some skin in the game. They can't risk releasing viruses in their products, whereas lesser market sellers and stores can fold up and just start up under a new name just as easily as that. I'm sure it's going to cost me a few more bucks, but the risk here of losing everything in one's digital life just isn't worth the reward. If you want more information on how to secure your PC, set up an isolated guest Wi-Fi network, or scan the machine if you think you may have one of these PCs, I put a video link to my favorite creators on this topic in the description and the pinned comment. If there are any updates to this video content, you'll find that there as well. This is the video I didn't want to have to make. And if this is your first time here meeting me, thank you for watching so far. Hopefully next time we'll meet under better circumstances.